Okay, so let's talk about the thing that's going to be the basic principle or the basic move in the entirety of uh, Holly's paper, Moral Evaluation of Sales Practices. And that's the idea of um, mutually beneficial exchanges. So the whole paper starts from the idea that um, a market system, you know, if we live in a, some kind of market economy, uh, the whole reason why you'd want to have that kind of economy or that kind of a sy system for arranging the way that we do things um, is that it provides a reasonably efficient way of people being able to satisfy each other's needs. So if I have, you know, a bunch of tacos, right, and I like tacos so much that I these are horrible tacos, but, you know, I've bought more tacos than I can possibly eat, so I've eaten these, and now I have a leftover taco, and you are hungry, and you want a taco, well, if and I have a taco I no longer need, so i rather have a dollar. Uh, so I would rather have a dollar than have a taco, and you would rather have a taco than a dollar. So we can exchange, right? And now I have a dollar, so I'm happier. You have a taco, you're happier. Um, and that's the basic idea of a market system, is that different people can do different things. We can trade goods and services in ways that uh, make all of us uh, better off. It doesn't mean we have to all be better off to the same degree, but it does mean that, you know, we're, everybody's supposed to be benefiting. So if the whole purpose of having a market-based uh, system is that we can more efficiently provide for each other's needs or more efficiently allocate resources that in a way that satisfies people's needs, uh, then and that's a moral justification. So, you know, if you're saying, why should we have a market system rather than, say, a planned economy like uh, the communists uh, tried, um, you know, and this would be your reason, then it gives you a basis for saying that certain sales practices are not going to be justifiable because they basically get in the way of the uh, exchanges happening in the way that they need to for the system to be justified. That was probably not the best way to put it. But this is, that's the basic idea. Um, if a sales practice gets in the way of a voluntary exchange, then it's not going to be a justifiable or an ethical sales practice. And this is a way of um, arguing that's broadly speaking what we call uh, teleological. And this is sort of an old school uh, way of doing ethics goes all the way back to Aristotle. So about as old as old school gets in um, you know Western philosophy. Uh, and the basic idea is that to come up with um, how something's good or how something's bad, you have to look at what that thing does, right? So if you have a, um, uh, say, a, 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 I don't know, uh, a cell phone, I guess. Um, and, you know, so what's the purpose of a cell phone? Well, it's to allow you to talk, text, download cat videos, find the local taco stand, etc. So a good cell phone is going to be one that lets you do all that stuff well, and a bad one is going to be stuff that doesn't let you do that stuff well, okay? So the basic uh, duty for a salesperson, Holly thinks, is to not get in the way of there being a, uh, a voluntary exchange or an acceptable exchange. Um, if everybody did that, then you wouldn't have the sort of system that we think is justified. So the, that kind of practice is unjustified. Now, he talks about um, a voluntary exchange and sometimes switches back and forth between saying a voluntary exchange and a mutually beneficial exchange. We don't need to worry too much about the difference here. Um, but what we do need to worry about, and this is what the rest of the paper spends its time spelling out, is what do you need to have in place in order to have a adequately voluntary exchange or an adequately benef mutually beneficial exchange. And the first is just, you gotta know stuff, right? You need to know what you're getting into, giving up, what the costs and benefits are. Uh, so you have to have the relevant information. If you don't have the relevant information, it's not gonna be pretty likely that you're gonna actually get um, an exchange that's in your interest or in both people's interest. Um, there's a non-compulsion condition which, you know, means that uh, you are, well, not being compelled. You're not being uh, forced or otherwise uh, made to enter into the exchange. And that preserves the idea that you're, you know, acting on your own 
uh, volition and you're acting for your own interests. And that's what you're going to need if both people are supposed to be uh, preserving their own interests by making this exchange. And third, you're going to need to have um, rationality. You're going to need to be able to think about what you're going to do. So just think of it this way, right? Uh, you're going to have the right kind of exchange if people know what they're giving up and what they're getting into, if they can think about it, you know, if they have the ability to weigh up the costs and benefits, and if their ability to act just on the basis of the costs and benefits of the exchange. Uh, all of that is what, together, what you're going to need. And that's what the paper is going to spend the rest of the time spelling out, because each of these is going to need a lot more detail. Um, the last thing that I'll mention is that uh, Holly starts off talking a bit about, you know, kind of like what would these exchanges look like in the ideal case? So, you know, perfect uh, knowledge. Everybody knows exactly everything you need to know. Uh, complete and total freedom. You could walk away. Uh, there's nothing else going on. There's no other um, cost to the exchange other than just, you know, whatever you're paying. And everyone's perfectly able to make their decisions. Now, in an ideal exchange, that's going to be, you know, about about as good as you're going to get, right? Because you have lots of options. You're only going to make the exchange if it's truly in your own interest. But Holly says, Mo, you know, in the real world, we're not always going to have that. And this is Adam speaking, probably rarely going to have that. So instead, what we should focus on is having um, a degree of acceptable exchange. You know, so it's not ideal, but it's sort of good enough. And the way that it's going to be good enough is that some you're gonna oops ah sorry um you're gonna you're gonna have some lack of um knowledge so maybe there's not perfect information or you know there's maybe some sales pressure or other time constraint or whatever else tends to do a bit of compulsion or there's you know uh the people aren't behaving entirely rationally and holly wants to say that you know at some level of these kind of defects, you're still going to get a pretty decent exchange. It's still going to be something that's likely to be in both parties' interest. And that's basically what you are, uh, as a salesperson, supposed to be aiming at, is uh, creating the conditions or at least not getting in the way of um, having acceptable exchanges. Okay, And everything else that comes in the rest of the paper is just going to spell out these in detail. Because that's where all of the kind of questions about, well, how, many, how much knowledge can you lack in order to still have a, uh, an acceptable exchange? How much compulsion can there be? How much rationality can you lack? And those are all going to be the, the kind of detailed questions that we'll get into in the rest of the paper. All right.